What's going on everybody? Jeff back here with another Hep Ahead beer review. Tonight we've got a new beer from Sierra Nevada. This is their Optimum Double IPA. So the deal with this one is that they only use whole cone hops. They don't use any of the hop extract or hop pellets. Um, and another thing that's pretty interesting about this is that they use some of their own proprietary varieties of hops. Uh, it says on their website that for bittering hops they use German Magnum. For aroma, they use Simcoe and one of their proprietary uh, varieties. For dry hops, they also use Simcoe and the same proprietary varieties. And then Torpedo hops, I don't even know what that means. Citra and Chinook. Then they use Two Row, Pale, Golden Promise, Munich, and Wheat Malts. I think it's 10.2% alcohol by volume and right around 100 IBUs. Um, this is about a month old or so, but I think that's still in their prime. And I think it should be good for review. So let's just go ahead and get into this. All right. It's got a pretty cool cap right there, whole cone Optimum Imperial IPA. All right, this one's got a pretty two finger head, um, maybe two and a half, uh, kind of creamy looking, um, light tan, definitely darker than white, but not not really khaki. I wouldn't say. It's got some pretty fine bubbles towards the bottom, kind of big towards the top. Um, it looks like it's sticking around a little bit. So Sierra Nevada says that they partially bottle condition their beer, so it's got a little bit of yeast in there, but but not enough, I guess, to be considered bottle conditioned. They also can condition their beers. Um, so this beer is pretty golden colored. Um, it's got a good amount of carbonation, a lot of carbonation streaming from the bottom, and there's there's no laser etching in this glass at all. Um, slight haze, like I was saying, from the partial bottle conditioning, um, but it's got a really nice light golden color. Um, yeah, copper golden, not too dark, but definitely not super light. Initially, I'm just getting massive um, West Coast smell on this one. Intense amount of citrus and grapefruit. Oh, slight sweetness, um, I'm assuming obviously coming from the malt, but not really much other than those two, uh, those two distinct smells. Maybe some light uh, tropical fruit coming through, but... Uh, but it's it's basically a pretty fruity and a pretty sweet um, smelling beer. It smells like it has intense bitterness, but you can't really smell any of the alcohol. All right, let's go ahead and give this one a taste. Cheers. That's super bitter. Um, like their Bigfoot. The the taste the main taste that you're getting kind of lingering on the tongue is that pine bitterness, and it's just it's lingering and it's not going away. I took the sip maybe five seconds ago, and it still is on my tongue. Um, so initially I'm getting that citrus and the middle of the flavor, I'm getting bubble gum. It's really weird, but it's really sweet and candy like, but again, that pine, it's just lingering on my tongue and it's so bitter, but initially tons of citrus flavor, giving away that bubble gum and that sweetness and then, uh, being overtaken by that pine towards the end. It goes down really smooth except except for that aggressive uh, aftertaste. But I'm going to sip on this one for a little bit longer and then I'll give you guys my final verdict. Okay, so I've been sipping on this one for a little bit longer and it's definitely grown on me a lot. As it warms up more, the citrus becomes more prevalent at the beginning and the sweetness um, kind of changes a little bit towards the middle. I'm not picking up that bubble gum that I was before, but I'm definitely getting some sweet malt and some sweet um, tropical fruit kind of a taste towards the middle. The end, the pine is still there, but it's not um, as annoying and lingering as it was before. But also, it's getting slightly replaced by a boo the booziness in this beer, which does come through as this, as this beer warms more. Uh, but I'm going to give this one a B. I'm going to give it an 83 uh, to an 85, somewhere in there. Um, because I think it is pretty good. It, it has a lot of good flavors, but I just think that it's um, it's missing it. As I say in some of my reviews, a lot of good beers that I that I enjoy, like Double Trouble and some of those other ones, they oh, and the the Lagunita sucks. Those have great hop flavor, but the the key to that is hop flavor. This one has an intense amount of hop bitterness, but it kind of misses out on some of the hop flavor. And I think that's what is slightly off-putting about this one for me. But I still think it's a it's a, it's a heavy hitter in the world of uh, double IPAs, and I think it's worth picking up to try at least once. You can probably get it for about 
two fifty or three bucks um, a bottle, which isn't too bad uh, for a beer, especially that ten point four percent alcohol by volume. So this has been Hobbs One for me. Uh, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another beer review. Cheers.